Welcome back again to another video on Dialux Evo. This time it's about streets. Street lighting is our topic for today. And I would like to start this session with the construction of a standard street. You probably know a standard street is always straight, so no curves, no hills. And yeah, this time we're going to start with the construction of a street similar to this one. And we'll be designing a street consisting of the main street, a boardwalk and a parking place, each of two meters and seven meters street, and the same thing on the other side. Street planning begins here. This is the way how to do street planning according to the standards. When clicking on it, the entire screen is divided into three parts. One on the left hand, like usual, where I have all the tools, and an upper and a lower part, which I can change using these display options. One for the floor plan, which I can change to a three-dimensional view, and side views, which are less intelligent for this kind of use, or I can change it entirely to have more information on my geometry and the results. So back to the preview. What I like to do is a simple street, like I told you, the street which was in my back. The street had a road width of seven meters, so that should go here. Before I insert details, I want to give it a name. Station, road. And illuminance conditions can be defined in this place. These are defined in general for this street. Then, show station road, the name, the roadway. And here I can add additional features for the street profile. We had parking lanes on the right and on the left of the street. So I need to click it twice. And here I have to change the order. I have marked the roadway and can use the arrow to move it one step up. And in this moment, it changes instantly also in the 3D view. The same is true for the sidewalk, one and two. I could use the arrows or as an alternative, I can use the drag and drop. And automatically with each of those lanes, I have marked these calculation surfaces, the valuation fields. Now, for each of these surfaces, I have the possibility and I need to define the geometry. Sidewalks are 2 meter wide and I can change them to 1 meter and 50. Laybys or parking lanes are 2 meters in our case and I can change that for both. And the sidewalk again. 1.5 meters. Each of the sidewalks and streets may also be named if I want to. So I can rename the sidewalk one to sidewalk north and this one sidewalk south. They are easier understood when I'm looking at the results at later stage. Now I have defined the geometries and you can see it here. Let's have a look at the valuation fields. These fields here. They have to fulfill certain standards. If I have not inserted any other information, then they come as CE5, CE5 for the sidewalks, and as ME4A for the street, which I may of course modify. Let's have a look at the sidewalks. Sidewalks, that's again the name, the illuminance class, which can be defined according to A classes, C classes or S classes. Well, for this project, I'd like to keep it unchanged. For the road, we have a lot more possibilities. The S classes, MEW classes, ME1 through ME6 and more recent CE classes and A classes. I would like to change ME4A to ME4B. As soon as I change the class, 
the values are changed here as well. For example, for an evaluation field of the ME4B class, the TI should be below 15, the SR higher than 0.5. Sometime we have a second row here. Let me change that to a different class. In some cases, the results have to be in a certain range. In this case, it's between 5 and 7.5 lux. Let's switch back to the ME4B. Here at the bottom, you have two other fields which are used only in some cases. For example, the vertical illuminance and the semi-cylindrical illuminance, which is only available for certain classes. At the bottom, you may define the automatic grid points, which is the typical way to go. But if you want to define them individually, you can click here and define them by quantity. Now we have defined the geometry and the demands for our class. At the top, you still may modify the maintenance factor. Let's switch that to 0.57. Now we may move on to the real planning process. We're going to integrate some luminaires. I may use the import luminaire file function here. I can import any kind of ULD, LDT, IES, CIB, LTL uh, file for this project or of course the ULD which I'm going to use here. So that's the luminaire we have found on the street which we have been looking at at the beginning of our video clip. So I can decide where to place them and when I click on that and make a selection please have also a look at this. Add a luminaire arrangement with the selected luminaire that's the name and here you have the description and the pole distance as you see it visualized now and this includes instant results. Now I can look a little bit more at the bottom. Photometric data for my lights. And yes, they are all on one side of the street. I can define a certain pole distance, for example, 20 meters in our case. And here I have different setups one side or the other, a two-sided arrangement, which would be looking like that. And now for a two-sided offset arrangement. This can be seen here. And when I change the pole distance to 24 meters, we are talking about the distance between two poles on one side of the street, not 24 meters between this and that. It's only 24 meters between this one and that one. So the valuation fields, you may have noticed that, will be changing automatically because the valuation field always uses the distance between two poles because before and after it's just repeating itself. Here I can and I should define other values. The actual light center height, which is here. If you want to know all the numbers, and understand them better, you may move over here and see what is meant by looking at this small pictogram. The light overhang in our case is 80 centimeters with a 5 degree boom angle. You see that changing instantly. 5 degrees. Here I may increase the number of luminaires per pole. I may define a different distance from the roadway and here pole geometry can be switched on and off. Some luminaires from some manufacturers are supplied including the pole geometry and others without. So therefore you can decide to make them visible or invisible. Now you've seen that we have automatically some results. And these results can be seen here at the same moment. And we have a list of green marks and one red mark. So the value for TI in our case 
with our street is not fulfilled. I can unmark it, so this will be ignored. Here I can calculate, which is just a matter of a second, because it's clear what we have. Everything is green, everything has been calculated. We have just one single result. And with a later video clip, I'll be showing you how you can compare luminaires so you have more than one result. But let's have a short look at the documentation. The planning data, which describes the project the way uh, we have been laying it out. The geometrical issues, distances, classes, surface classes as well. Results summary. And here you can compare if everything has been fulfilled or not. If you don't want to see that, you have to use the page settings. You can unmark the fulfilled, not fulfilled line and confirm it in this place. And then you won't see the mark anymore or the cross. You have that separated for the roadway as for the sidewalks north and south. So, I would like you to enjoy the first steps in the use of the Street Scheme Planner which we have in Dialux Evo. In one of the next video clips, I'll be showing you how to compare different luminaires. And thank you for looking and listening. Goodbye.